guys, before advancing a little bit more on the data on paper tables, I want to tell you that <clears throat> all these values are referenced to a state. And the most common one, for example, if you're looking for vapor tables, is the reference is essentially liquid water at zero Celsius and one atmosphere. And what does that mean? Essentially, that if you wanted to, let's say, get water at 10 Celsius, and of course one atmosphere, you will reference that to this value because calculating the total enthalpy and the total entropy and the total energy, well, internal energy, it's impossible. You need to calculate changes. And this will be possible if we make a reference. So let's say, what is the enthalpy change? If we have H2 minus H1. H1 will be my reference, so I will always get H1. And my final value, H2, I will always get it from this data here. So I will be able to get my change on enthalpy. Uh, it's a little bit tricky, I know, but just I wanted to let you know, guys, that this is the reference for water vapor. Always be, uh, be sure, guys, uh, maybe someone choose atmospheric pressure and 25 Celsius and liquid water. So then you will have a, let's say, a difference on 25 Celsius. Just be sure to apply the reference value. And OK. Let's continue and that. I wanted to show you this example, guys. It's a vapor table, yes, of saturated steam. What does that mean is you have steam, okay, and you have two data, where is it? Yeah, you have the liquid one and the vapor one, which is awesome. It's not only saturated steam, it's also saturated water going to this line. For example, you get, remember the diagram? PT diagram, you have data approaching from liquid to gas, and you have data from gas to liquid. So you can see this is ordered by temperature. Let's go to the most common one. Actually, well, we don't have the most common one, but you could go to 100 Celsius and you will find that at 100 Celsius, you will get about one bar, which is uh, very near from atmospheric temperature. And what else? You're going to calculate the specific volume. You can see that the specific volume for water is so like common, like 1,000 cubic meters per kilogram. You need to multiply times 1,000 here. Right? So you can see that the change on specific volume, and you know specific volume is the inverse on density. So the change on density is almost zero because it's liquid. But for a vapor, you know that this is totally dependent. You know, ideal gas PV equals NRT. You know that if you increase the temperature, you're going to increase the vapor. And you're also increasing, look for saturation, you always increase the vapor pressure. So you increase this and this. So let's see uh, this example, four Celsius. If you wanted to evaporate that or to be saturated, you will need this pressure, 0.008 bars and you will have a specific volume of 157.2 so if you want cubic meters you got the one kilogram guys of that specific for Celsius and 0 0.0081 bars you will have 157 cubic meters per each kilogram of that substance but let's see let's increase the temperature to 40. 40 Celsius, you will need, of course, if you want to be saturated, you will need to increase the pressure, 0 0.07. And as you can see here, guys, now, because you increase that, you're going to need 19.5 cubic meters per kilogram. And why is that? Why this sudden change? Because you're increasing too much the pressure, you're increasing more pressure than temperature increase. So you're going to need way less than that. So bottom line of the story, as temperature increases for water, saturation temperature I'm speaking about, the saturation pressure also increases. And probably you know that since 
where is it? The pressure increased, volume needs to decrease in order to sustain that change in temperature. And this is for saturated uh, steam. You will be able to get that also in English units, not only for temperature, you can see here temperature, it's order temperature, but you could also, if you're lazy enough, you will find it with pressure, order in pressure, which is a lot of, uh, it's very handy if you're looking, for example, what is the saturation pressure at 50 psi. Instead of looking here 50, 50, 50, 50, and you will see, oh, god damn it, you don't have 50, you have either 49.19, which I will say it's okay, or you have 57.53. Well, I would personally use 280 cells, uh, Fahrenheit cells. But if you will have the table, you could go directly 50 psi, 20, 45, 50. And as you can see, actually it's not 280. You will use 281 Fahrenheit. So that's very awesome. You have it, the same data, order per temperature and order per pressure. Of course, the data should be the same, if you find the same. For example, 212. Let's go for 212. And you're probably asking why is I have 210 and 220 and 230 and 212 doesn't seem to fit the data. You have 0, 0, 0, 0 and then a 2. This is because this is the boiling normal point. We have our atmosphere is not actually 15 psi but 14.69 psi. So I know it's almost nothing, but that almost nothing is too Fahrenheit. Uh, anyways, so this is the only line that will be actually the same line as the other line here. You can actually check it by yourself because we have the same data and the same pressure. It's pretty difficult to find exact values. Well, actually here I found one. 170 Fahrenheit, 170 Fahrenheit. And actually the data does not fit. Here's a 6 PSI and I found 5.997 PSI. Other data, 20. No, actually no, we cannot find that. We need 40. Maybe we could use 25 and 240. 240, almost 25. Well, the only data that I assure you you'll always get is the normal boiling point, which is 212 Fahrenheit at 14.69 PSI. Now that was on saturation, let's see what happens if you actually heat more that uh, vapor, you will have, for example, increased temperature. And there are a ton of data on these tables, not only because you may have uh, saturated, uh, sorry, superheated vapors at any increased pressure and temperature. So the common range, normal ones, of course, depends on the application and I'm sure you could find uh, more temperature. But the common one is 50 Celsius and around 1,000 or 1,500 Celsius. And the pressure goes not only almost zero Pascal, which will be almost vacuum, but to very high pressurized uh, operations such as 50 megapascals. And just give you a note, guys, when you check out the information, check if you're talking about Pascals, kilopascals, or megapascals. Superheated steam, for example, of course, you have the saturation one. They, t they are telling you the saturation at 8 megapascal is 295 Celsius. And the saturation at 10 megapascal is, of course, a little bit more, 311 Celsius. And uh, yeah, what, what happens if you have this, this pressure, but you start increasing the temperature? Well, you have this data here. Okay. Or the same, if you have 10 megapascals and you start increasing the temperature, well, you have this data. And of course, this is not the same as this 600 here, because the pressures are different. So you can see that in the specific volume, you have 0 0.048. And since this is more pressurized, you will have less uh, specific volume, which is 0 0.038. Now guys, I think this is the last one, this is not so common one, um, the solid liquid saturation, let me give you this diagram, remember you have solid, liquid, 
is pressure versus temperature and gas we're talking about this line right here solid liquid which will be when you have ice plus water okay they are useful in real life for refrigeration but actually we're not going to use that that much so for example what will be the vapor pressure at zero celsius degrees well you have almost zero but if you decrease that let's say I want to know how much pressure I will need to have in order to get a 30 celsius water converting to ice you will need 0 0.00038 bars and you have the data here guys but I tell you once again this is not that useful or at least for this course we're going to be working more with uh, liquids and vapor What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.